That's so great. Oh, well, we're just going to go ahead and get started. I know people are coming in, they're wandering in the wilderness, and then they shall gather from the dispersion. All right. As you can see, oh, I'm Connie Sokol's mom, the usual, and I am so excited to talk with you today about how to understand, use, and increase your covenant power. Has anyone had a question about any one of those three before? Anyone wanted to know more about covenant power, how to use it, or how to access it? Well, raise your high. Well, let's get the blood sugar going because you're going to start going a little coma in a minute anyway. Come on in, ladies. Find a seat. So good to see you. So officially starting, I wanted to just have you look at these two words on the board. I went to the PowerPoint since we have only 20 fast minutes together, and you'll notice I speak rather quickly. So put tennis shoes on your ears and just pray for the gift of interpretation of tongues because we are going to move quickly. I'm going to ask you to be <coughs> interactive with me. So grab a pen, paper, phone. You're allowed that. We want to have you be able to be thinking because you're going to get pearls today. Pearls of great price probably has nothing to do with what I'm saying. But the Spirit and Heavenly Father are going to teach you. They're going to guide you in what you need to know. And He's going to do that through the Holy Ghost that you'll be able to know what he wants you to get from this today. So when you saw these two words, covenant power, did anything come to mind? Anyone? Something? Endowment. Nice. There's no like right answer. There is no washer behind the door. Like just what's your thoughts? Yeah. Um, everyone has access to it. Everyone has access to it. That's right. If you make it, strive to keep your covenants, you've got access to it. Anything else? Yes. From the previous one, promises. Promises. So good. Anything else? The work on the other end. You cannot just get the covenant. You have to do something. It doesn't get dropped by Amazon on your doorstep. You've got to do something more than swipe. Darny, darn, darn. Right? That's exactly right. So covenant power. Think about what that means in your life and think about those words and the power of those words. I love this from President Nelson. One of the most important concepts of revealed religion is that of a sacred covenant, a sacred promise with God. When you and I enter that covenant path, this is the part I love. We have a new way of life. Just like they were talking in there. You just see life differently. We thereby create a relationship with God that allows him to bless and change us. The covenant path leads us back to him. If we let God prevail in our lives, that covenant will lead us closer and closer to him. So it is this beautiful shift of everything that we are doing in this moral world and the sort of lower level living, and it shifts us in this new path. Bright eyes, new way of seeing things, and then we have this limitless, renewable, spiritual energy source that is always available to us. And as I was trying to think of a good analogy for that, I thought, what's an everyday thing? And I was like, the outlet in our walls. It is connected to what? A constant power source, right? Limitless, essentially, pay the bill. But it's right there. And what do we need to do to access it? Plug in. plug in. We've got to plug in. We have to make that choice. So every time you look at an outlet today, I hope that you will think, how can I plug in? How I plugged in? How much have I plugged in? Plugging in. But as we plug in, we can understand if we do a few things and do them better, we can actually have access to more effectively and more fully access that power. I love this from Elder Bednar. The enabling power of the atonement of Jesus Christ strengthens us to do and be good and to serve beyond our own individual desire and natural capacity. Do you want that? Do you have things in your life that you need more than your natural capacity can do? Didn't President Nelson plead with us to increase our capacity, our spiritual capacity? How do we do it? Covenant power. So let's talk about three ways to do this. They're not the 11th commandment. They're simply my thoughts and musings that as I've read and studied, this is what came to me. So number one is one of my skill sets is to write allegedly. So good luck. All right. <laughs> understand it. What do we need to do to understand it? You probably know the story of Sister Sherry Dew when she was a member of the General Resetting Presidency. It was at the Saturday conference session. She was released, but the next Sunday morning, she still had a meeting to go to. It was six in the morning. She gets there. She's thinking, oh, it's early. I wonder if I can still get in. She tries to get in. Of course she can't. So she buzzes the security guy and he says, Sister Dew, do you have your ID badge? And she's like, where would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it right here. He said, did you know that that will open this door and all the other doors. She's like, oh, what? 
Do you mean for the last five years, I could have gotten into all of these doors on my very own? And he's like, yes, but now you're released, so it's going to be deactivated. <laughs> oh, and she said that irony was unmistakable. For months, I had carried with me a badge that had given me privileges I hadn't understood or taken advantage of. I had not understood the badge's power. That's covenant power. When we seek to understand it, what can we do? We can do more with it. We can understand how to apply it and use it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So it might be first and foremost, value it, learn about it, study it. There's fabulous talks. I'm going to read quotes from this. They're going to be said to you. So don't worry about trying to write things down. But I will say some of the talks that I found that were so good. Covenants by President Nelson. Couldn't be any easier. There's um, Covenant Women Partnering with God. That's President Irene. There's the power of covenants, and that's Elder Christofferson. There's a bunch of them. There's a great one from Bonnie L. Oscarson from BYU Women's Conference. There's a reference to that in there. It's so good. You know Bonnie. She's just like Bonnie. Hey, she's my friend. But anyway, it's so good, so fun, so easy to read. I love this because this understanding of it, suddenly on this path, we see the things in front of us so differently. So one of the first things I want to look at differently is our challenges in our lives. For one moment... I'm going to give you exactly one minute. I want you to write down one challenge in your life that you are struggling with. Keeps you up at night. You know you cannot do this one on your own. What is that challenge? No peeking on someone's paper. I served a mission in Japan, so I often write these Japanese. <laughs> Go ahead, write it down. What is one challenge? Put it in cryptic and Gaelic. I don't care, but just write down what's that challenge or think of it in your mind. You're like, I'm going to write it down. My mother's students. <laughs> Give that challenge in your mind. Okay, now let's do a little exercise. I want you to finish this sentence. I ask for more covenant power to. I ask for more covenant power to. To what? To have more patience. To have a fuller measure of the gift of discernment. To know what's really going on. To set healthy boundaries to have the energy and ability to get through this challenge. What is it that you are going to ask him for? What kind of aspect of that covenant power do you need to get through this challenge? Anyone want to be bold or brave enough to share? <coughs> the aspect of the covenant power, not the challenge, but the aspect that you are praying for, for that additional covenant power. Gift of discernment. Gift of discernment. Is that one of the best ones ever? Oh, so good. Anyone else? An aspect of covenant power that you are praying for or want to pray for. To be a peacemaker in family relations. A peacemaker in family relations. I love it. A friend of mine just posted the other day. She just listed, I can't believe something is happening. She said, all that is in my life, darkness, suicide, betrayal, hatred, contention, hurt. And then she said, I am praying for his power to focus on the good. And he, she said, when I look at that, he shows me light and love and hope and ability and capacity. And that's what she is doing. She's asking for that covenant power. I love this from President Nelson. Your commitment to follow the Savior by making covenants with him and then striving to keep those covenants will open the door to every spiritual blessing and privilege available to men, women, and children everywhere. It will open the door to every spiritual privilege and blessing. That's power. We just need to plug in. Okay? So think about what you just got out of that. If he has anything for you. <coughs> President Averitt talked about this in his talk. Prepare. Prepare to receive it. Why is preparing so important? Where do we see it in the scriptures? <coughs> Everywhere. Prepare every needful thing, right? If you are prepared, ye shall not fear. You pass the seminary test. Good job. Think about the priesthood. What's the ironic priesthood? Preparatory priesthood. He knew he could just throw us into a, a priesthood car, essentially. We had to have the training wheels and a little trike, and we had to fall off a whole bunch of times and just try to get prepared to utilize this power, right? 
preparation is key. So I love playing pickleball with my family, and we are horrible at it. I mean, we we can get the ball over the net, but we don't want to do the scoring. Guess what? Got three numbers. Who does that, right? I play tennis. I'm like, two is playing. So I didn't want to know how to do it because it's too confusing. So we've been playing, but my friends play, and they have invited me to come and play with them. They're really good. So I thought, I'm going to wait until I'm up to snap, and then I will play with them. Well, it's been two years. So finally, I scheduled an appointment with someone who could show me what to do because I'm old. So I went with my daughter and we go there. But before we go, I said, I'm going to be prepared because I don't want to look like an idiot. So I look on YouTube where all good things are. And I said, okay, this instruction from the 17 year old kid will be able to tell me how to play pickleball. And for 10 minutes, I watched this one-on-one. And what do you know? It was so easy. I could have been playing pickleball for two years with my friends, going to lunch and having so much fun afterwards. But I did it because I wasn't prepared and I knew exactly what to do. And when I went to that lesson, because, you know, we're paying for it, so I want to make it worth my while. We go there and we were able to do like three lessons in one. We just improved so rapidly. In fact, at one point she asked a question and I answered it. She said, no one has ever got that question right. And I said, you two. Okay, so prepared. Well, we have something better than YouTube and more trustworthy for sure. That's the scriptures. It's a temple. It's prayer. It's going to the Lord and we can be prepared. How do you want to prepare to receive more covenant power? What is one thing that you can do? One simple thing, one personal thing, one thing that is on your heart that the Lord is nudging you about to prepare to receive more and have that open cup. So I'm going to share an experience I had with you just recently. So Saturday morning, I woke up 4.16. Ugh. And you just know the Lord has something for you, but you think, why can't it be 5 o'clock in the afternoon? I don't understand this. We've got to talk. Anyway, 4.16, I'm not a big dreamer, but usually when I have dreams, I know he's trying to tell me something. It usually means something. In this dream, I'm in this big building, and there's lots of rooms. And I'm trying to have a conversation with someone, but every room is busy. There's noise, and there's people, and there's all these things going on. And I just keep saying, oh, it's so busy trying to have this conversation. I'm no gospel scholar, but even I got the concept. He was saying what? Connie, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to tell you these really special things, not the usual things, these special things. And I need you to find a quiet space to just listen. And then the next thought I had was fourth watch. And I went, and I thought, Gerald one. I remember Kingdom of the Crown. Anyone read it so many times? And in the footnotes, he tells you stuff. So I remember him talking about fourth watch, the world in back in the Roman days. And of course, and I'm trepidatious. And I look it up on Google and I'm like, no. What time do you think it is? It's 3 to 6 a.m. I put two and two together on what's he saying. I want to talk with you in a quiet space between 3 and 6 a.m. regularly. Oh. And so I say, okay. I was up, it's 4.16. I'm like, oh, I was up at 4 a.m. on my mission, okay? And now I'm older, much older. Can we do five? I feel like it's like, ding, 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 five, five, gone, so So I said, five, can we do five? And it was five. All right, I'll do five. And then in a bit of religious zealousness, I say, I will do this next week. I will get up at five every morning so I can be still and be at peace and hear what he has to say to me. And then it hits me. The next week is for me. It's my one week of the year that I can sleep in. Oh. And I make it to shape. And then the next thought comes so lovingly, so sweetly. And he, I feel this thought. Of, yes. And it's also holy. Oh, I think maybe. Because if there is a week out of the year that you want to take extra time to think about and be closer to the Savior, what week would it be? It'd be a holy week. It was such a gift. And so we did it. And it was amazing, subtly, softly amazing. My heart was so tender all week and I could feel nuances and I felt revelation and I understood what to do in different situations. Nothing like it spelled out of my alphabets, but just this fullness through the week. And even the temple, I started doing the temple differently. So it may be in your preparation, it's not something big and amazing to do or something so overt. But maybe it's just the way you approach it. When I go to the temple, because things are busy, I go every week and I am fast. I do everything fast. I'm walking in the temple on those marble floors and you can hear my heels go. And I think those horrible people, their pacemakers are like, she's coming! <laughs> and I'm like, help! Help! And I have walked slowly. I have walked in slowly and I think they're so happy to see me now because I'm not getting a heart failure. But think about the way that you can do something that maybe it's a different approach instead of a drive-through way of going to the temple like I was doing, where it's more time and setting it apart 
that space. I love Joseph Smith for this fact. I so respect him at the age of 14. He had a really important question. If it was me, I would drop dope right there by my bed. and been like, hey, I'm ready. Pen and paper. Give it to me. What did he do? He chose a place that was set apart and made it sanctified. He consecrated it. He made it special. I love this from our state vision. We invite you to develop other geographic places of connection to the Savior, a room, a chair, a porch, a car break, a mountain, a walk, where you can regularly go to separate yourself from distraction and to connect to his power, answers, guidance, healing, and joy. Anything come to mind? Anything hitting you with, I think I can do that differently, or I think I want to try that. Anybody want to share anything that's come? There's no competition. Oh, yeah, well, I can get up at 2.30, and I can do it while I'm jogging a marathon. No, that is not required. In fact, I love Camille Ann Johnson, the general Reef study president. She's like, the Lord does not require a 15-minute prayer. Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be sackcloth and ashes, but it just needs to be meaningful. Anybody have anything that came to mind? I like to just talk throughout the day, too. Just like the brand, I like to talk. So I just like a little conversation with this morning. It doesn't always start with a one or end with an AM. Amen. Amen. But it just is constant for us. Love. And that continual dialogue, right? Having it on your heart. Love it. Just think in your mind what that might be for you. The last thing we're going to cruise through this is use it. You get more covenant power in the doing. So what do we need to do to access more of that? And what is it that he's asking us to do to better use it? When I was younger, I cleaned houses to make money, and I was 13, 14, and early, early days, I remember cleaning this woman's house, and the bathroom was in the hallway. She had one of those, like, hot dog canister vacuums, you know? And I was doing the bathroom floor, and I was cleaning the bathroom floor. Well, I kicked over the bucket, and all the water went on the floor. And I'm like, <laughs> and then I went to the vacuum. And I thought, why? With the vacuum, this water can be sucked up by this electric vacuum. That did not work well for me. Shockingly, not well for me. And I learned a really good lesson. You can have the power and you can plug in, but you cannot be using it effectively. That's a true story. So what do we need to do to use effectively? We could do two things. One, we can bring what we have. We could just bring what we have, our widow's mites, our mom's mites, our woman's mites. Just bring, bring what you have, our own loaves of fishes, and give up something to work with, and he can work with it. There's a story told by Kathy Christopherson, the Detail Christopherson's wife, Elbert, the Christopherson's wife, and BYU Women's Conference, small and simple things, something like that. Anyway, she shares about her friend Marley that had six kids, and she said her husband traveled a ton. She just had a newborn, six kids seven kids somewhere in there and the next one I've had asthma problems so at night he would have attacks so she'd get the newborn down and then he'd have an attack then she'd get him down and then the newborn would wake up you know what I'm talking about seven kids <laughs> what she's talking about and she said she was just at her limit and so she would pray that the asthma son would be healed and pray that the newborn would sleep through the night you do those desperate prayers and it was working and she said I need to do it different so she changed her prayers she said please let it be sufficient whatever sleep I do get please let it be sufficient and what? So bring what you have and ask him, can you make it sufficient? Because it will be. He will help you make it sufficient. And the second thing is to ask, just like that sentence I had you write down, and ask and ask again and ask more specifically, as specifically as you can, and then add on that and something better. So think about Joe, Joseph Smith, he's sitting over the table, the, the Johnny cake, and he, remember that's all they've got. He thanks the Lord for it first. And then he said, and we'll pray for something better. And what happened? Open the door. Son had a ham and a bag of flour. Something better. So ask. Tad, Tad R. Collister talks about every weakness has a countermanding spiritual gift. And in this gorgeous cycle, we have a weakness, a challenge. We keep our covenants, and then he gives us covenant power. And in that, he says, we develop those gifts, and that's how we develop our way to become like God. That's how we get him. It's gorgeous. So I invite you today to think about something that has struck you in the short time that we've had together. One thing that is on your heart about what the Lord wants you to do to better understand, use, and increase your covenant power. And I bear testimony. That whatever might you bring to him in any of that, the Lord does love effort and he rewards it. And I bear my testimony that is true and it is so worth it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.